Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris from Feldgrab Productions, and no, I have not lost my mind, although we are looking at Google Sheets, perhaps the most boring of all programs, but I'm using it to prove a point here, and that is 10 millimeter is the greatest wargaming scale of all time. It is the once and future wargaming scale. Most people just use 10 millimeter to play large army scale battles, and that's great. I do that myself. I just made an order from Pentraken Miniatures the other day to use for some late Romans and also as uh, Gondor for some Lord of the Wings Wargaming. And Pentraken has some fantastic sculpts. I'll be using them as an example because I happen to really like them. Disclosure, I've done some work from Pentraken and painting in the past, but I do it because I love them. But I think something is missing in 10 millimeter Wargaming. I think people are missing out on some things, and that is skirmish Wargaming in 10 millimeter. For an example, Pentraken had sent me these 10 millimeter World War run Russians a while back, and I only have a small handful of them. I, I got the samples so I could see what they look like. And this is how I base them for 10 millimeter skirmish wargaming. Two infantry on a base, maybe if it's an officer, you put three on there. If you're going with cavalry, just one cavalry on a base. I happen to throw it on a square base here, but you could certainly use rounds. Here's for um, the Russian Civil War as well. And if you want to individually base them, you can, as I have here, these are some uh, World War I poles. Here's some more cavalry on smaller bases. I believe these are 10 by 20 centimeters. So you can do a lot with all sorts of figures, like this American infantry in their distinctive mustard yellow outfits, and you can do some skirmishing. Now, I prefer not to put them on the tiny, tiny little individual bases because they tend to fall over. I like to put a few of them on single bases. And one of the great things about 10 millimeter figures is they're cheap. They're dirt cheap because they're so small. And that means that you can get into some games that you really want to play for not a lot of money. And for that, we're going to look at three different games, all of them by two fat lardies, all of them nominally skirmish games. Three different eras. First is Infamy. Infamy, that is their ancients, mostly Roman and their enemies era war game. Then, of course, we've got the ever popular Chain of Command, their World War II skirmish platoon level game. And then finally, Sharp practice the large skirmishes in the era of black powder. Now, especially with the two fat lardy games, I find they call them skirmish games, but they're not like your Games Workshop, Warcry, or Kill Team games where you're playing with 10 or less figures. These are skirmish games where really you are fielding 30, 60, maybe even 80 or 90 figures. So if you're dealing with 28 millimeter figures, that is a lot of figures and that cost can really add up and the cost, especially in time of painting. But with six millimeter figures, sorry, 10 millimeter figures, uh, the painting time is really cut down. I can do a single 10 millimeter figure in about six minutes if I'm batch painting. That's where that six number came from. So we're gonna look at these three different games and we're gonna break them down in Infamy, Infamy, Chain of Command, and Sharp Practice. Now, I'm not looking at any supports um, that you can bring in these games, and I'm not experts in these games, so if I make any mistakes, I apologize, and please let me know. But what I've done is I've done a little math. So, for example, in Infamy, Infamy, depending on the area you choose, if you choose Rome, the late Republic, I've gone with Caesar in Gaul or Britain. So this is the basic Caesar, uh, Caesarian legion serving in Gaul or Britain. And it comes with a certain number of troops uh, from the start, and then you can buy supports later on. So you're going to need a centurion to lead your figures. You're going to have uh, two groups of eight legionaries, so that's 16 in total. You're going to have an optio, it's kind of like a sergeant, and he's going to lead your legionary recruits. Again, two units of eights for 16. You're going to have some tribal slingers, six of them being led by a leader. And then you're going to have some allied Gallic cavalry, six of them also being led by a Gallic leader, presumably mounted. And in Pentraken, everything's listed by code. So we're going to be looking at AIR 1, 4, and 9 for the Romans. If we jump over here to the Imperial Romans, we have the legionnaires with sword and pilum, that's the um, throwing kind of spear javelin um, that the, the Romans had during this time period. And so you can see it comes with a pack of 30 figures, two different poses for only five pounds. Yes, it says six pounds here. Uh, I'm in the US, so I'm gonna be using five pounds. That's excluding the uh, value added tax. So five pounds 
that's roughly six dollars at this moment. And so we're going to need 16 legionaries and 16 legionary recruits. Now, unfortunately, that's 32, and these packs come in packs of 30. So I'm going to grab one pack of AIR-1, the legionaries of sword and pilum, and then I'm also going to go down to AIR-9, the Marian legionaries. This is actually the legionaries with the ovular shields that uh, were more common, well, really were the legionaries of the period of Julius Caesar. Um, you could, of course, mix this up. You could go with auxiliary legionaries. Uh, you could throw in Eastern legionaries, uh, Praetorian Guard, if you want to be a little bit fancy uh, with their funny plumes. So you've got options there. They all have 30 figures and they're five or six pounds, depending on where you are. Then uh, for the Centurion and the Optio, we're going to go well, the Optio, you could kind of just use one of your extra legionaries. You're going to have 60, you only need 32, so you could just use one of those and base them separately. Or you could go in and you could pick up a pack of Foot Command AIR-4. It includes officers, 10 of them, uh, 10 musicians, and 10 standards. Now, do you need the musicians and the standards just to start? No, but you can have those tucked aside for later, and that's five pounds. That is one of the slight downsides, is that sometimes when you're picking things up, especially for officer figures, you're going to get a pack, it's going to have a lot of officers, you only need one of them, but you're stuck with a bunch. But then you're going to have a lot left over for later. Now Caesar also brings tribal slingers, the, the Gallic cavalry. So for that we're going to jump over to the Gauls list, and we're going to want one pack of slingers AGA5 that's 30 figures again that's more figures than you need you only really need seven of them uh, six plus the leader and then we're going to pick up a pack of the cavalry that's AGA6 you're going to get 15 figures which happens to include one separate officer plus a musician and a standard bear so that's going to give you plenty of cavalry for you to have and if you're facing off against some Gauls you're definitely going to want some Gallic cavalry for that side as well now if you do the math on that we're picking up uh, one legionary with sword and pilum, one Marian legionary, a Roman foot command, a pack of slingers, a pack of cavalry. That adds up to 25 British pounds or approximately 29 US dollars before shipping. So you are all in on this. Plus, you have a lot of Roman extras. Actually, you have a lot of extras of everything. You could field um, pretty much one and a half of these uh, groups. Uh, with that 29 pounds um, and easily go in there and pick up some Gauls to face off against that I didn't go over because I'm just going to pick stick to one per game uh, but you've got uh, light Gauls you've got fanatics foot command um, bowmen that we skipped over chariots if you're playing with the Britons heavy Gauls uh, with a bit of heavier armor so lots of options there uh, if you're doing individual casualty removal and you have two figures on a base, you could pick up some of these casualty markers so that you can mark down that one of them is dead, or you could just use uh, symbols. So you're all in on Infamy Infamy for about $29 plus shipping. Then, jumping on over to Chain of Command, it's actually going to get cheaper. $29 is the most money you're going to spend here, because Chain of Command... I've gone with a German platoon, just your standard late war German infantry, infantry platoon. You're going to need an officer. You're going to need a Panzerschreck team. You're going to need three junior leaders with Panzerfaust that lead your three squads. Those three squads all have either an MG34 or an MG42 plus crew. And then they each have, uh, well, technically six riflemen. And then the seventh rifleman goes with the MG34-42 crew. Uh, so that's a total of 21 riflemen. Uh, now, for all of these, we are going to pick up three packs of riflemen, because in their World War II line, the riflemen, here we are, GRF9, come in packs of 10 for one pound 67 pence. So we're going to pick up three packs of riflemen, and that gives us our 21 riflemen, plus a couple leftover extras for various usages. Then... For our MG32 or 34, you have your choice between the two. I've just gone with the 42, and actually this is perfect because it gives us exactly three guns, and that is exactly what we need. It comes with a gunner, and it comes with a loader, and of course it comes with the gun itself. If you want to go with the MG34, it's the exact same here. We have the gunner, and we have the loader, and that's going to cost us pound sixty-seven pence for three sets, which is exactly what we need.
Then we're going to need one set of Panzer Shreks. Now the Panzer Shreks are 167 again. Pretty much all these are 167. You're going to get three of them. It's a little bit of overkill. You're going to have extras, but it's about two dollars. It's really not breaking the bank. Then you're going to get a set of 10 Panzerfausts. You only need three of them, so you'll have some leftovers. And then you could just find an officer figure from somewhere. Uh, if you want to pay 167 for an office for a single officer that you only really needed uh, one of, uh, you're going to get 10. It's the way it is. Um, and if you need support, you've got mortars, you've got combat engineers, uh, you've got the Fallschirmjägers, uh, you've got, uh, you can go back and pick up guys with MP40s, um, or riflemen with STG44, so you can really mix it up there. Picking up all of these, your three packs of riflemen, the MG42, the Panzer Shrek, the Panzer Fast, the officer is going to cost you 11 pounds, 69 pence, or approximately $13.60 for an entire platoon. You could buy a platoon of Germans, a platoon of US, a platoon of British, a platoon of Russians, and you're going to come away from this for about $50 for four platoons. It's a pretty good deal there. Now I'm going to save the cheapest for last, and that is because the cheapest is actually sharp practice. And I have gone with the, well, the namesake of sharp practice, Richard Sharp's literary detachment. And that is because you can get Richard Sharp's literary detachment of light British infantry with muskets plus his rifles for $12. Or a little over 10 pounds. So we're going to need a light company leader, a light company sergeant, 24 men with muskets, a rifle company leader, a rifle company sergeant, 18 rifles, and that's it. And what do we need? We need three packs. That's it, three packs. Because actually, the British in this case come with some pretty nifty sets. Now you can, of course, we've got the center company here if you're going with the regular line infantry. We need the flank infantry. The flank infantry are both the grenadiers and the light infantry. They wore the same uniforms, we're going with the lights. So the light infantry, notice we have march attack and we have firing line. Now we are gonna need 24 of them. These happen to come in packs of 16. So we get two packs, that gives us 32, so that's 24, plus you can come in with an extra a couple of guys if you need them. But even better than this is they actually offer, if we scroll down a little bit, light infantry advancing with command and light infantry firing with command. So you don't need to buy a separate set of command. You just buy, in this case, the light infantry advancing with the command, the MPB-7, and that's going to give you 13 foot, one officer, one musician, one standard bearer. You could use that musician as the sergeant. He's not really playing uh, a drum. He's more uh, blowing, uh, I believe, some sort of horn that they used to communicate with each other when they were skirmishing. Everything I know about Napoleonics I learned from reading the Richard Sharp books. So you've got your light infantry command. Then we're going to go back and we're going to pick up one pack of the firing line because we don't really need more officers for the light infantry. Here it is. Uh, so that's 16 muskets plus the 13 muskets. And that also gives us a variety of poses. We'll have a total of four poses and a total of 29 muskets plus uh, the officer, the musician, and the standard bearer. So that's plenty there. That's gonna cost us a total of two pounds, 67 pence each. And then finally we need our rifles and that is NPB nine rifles, gives us 30 figures. 24 of the actual riflemen with two poses, one officer and one musician who, again, you can use as that sergeant with his little horn if you want. We needed 18 plus the two. We end up with 28 plus the two. That's five pounds. That's a total of 10 pounds, 34 pence, or $12. You can play sharp practice for $12, except for the terrain and the other side and the rules. That is an incredible savings. And if I do say so, these peninsular... Uh, Brits look fantastic. They're one of the uh, new, go away. They are one of the newer sculpts by Pendragon. And if you want to see what the French look like in the Peninsula line, so you can see what you will be fighting against, they're not in here. We got to go back to, let's see, 1809, 
French. And we've got some great French in here. Look at the light infantry firing, marching. We've got elites, grenadiers, we have sailors, engineers. You've got so many different options here. Uh, you can go for the chasseurs, light infantry, hussars. You got all these options, lots of different sculpts. You're not going to spend that much money. And that's why I want to talk about 10 millimeter skirmish. Try it out sometime two figures for base for infantry or one cavalry per base. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I actually picked up for the game um, Blood and Steel. Uh, that is by Firelock Games. It is their uh, late 19th century war game for the Franco-Prussians. I picked up some Pendragon figures, so eventually I'm going to get those based up and show them to you. Thanks everybody for watching. Everybody, if you have any questions, let me know down below and keep on printing, keep on painting, keep on playing.